Thank you. Dr. Paul. Good morning, Mr. Greenspan. <clears throat> I understand that uh, uh, you did not take my friendly advice last fall. I thought maybe you should uh, look for other employment, but I see you <laughs> kept your job. Now, I'm pleased that you're back, though, because uh, at least you remember the days of sound money, and uh, you, you have some respect for it, and even though you do describe it as nostalgia, uh, still, you do remember the days of sound money. So. Uh, I'm pleased to have you here, and uh, of course, my my concern for your wealth welfare is that uh, you, you might have to withstand some pummeling this uh, coming year or two when, when the correction comes uh, because of all the inflation that we have uh, undergone here in the last several several years. But I too, like a former me another member of this committee, um, believe there is some unfairness in the system that some benefit and some suffer. And uh, of course, uh, his solutions would be a lot different than mine, but I think a characteristic of paper money, of fiat money, is that some benefit and others lose. And a good example of this, of how Wall Street benefits, certainly Wall Street is doing very well, but just the other day, I had one of my shrimpers in my district call me, he says he's tying up his boat. Uh, his oil prices have more than doubled and he can't afford it, so for now, he will have to close down shop. So he suffers more than the person on Wall Street, so it is an unfair system. And this is not unusual, this is a characteristic well known that when you destroy and debase a currency, some people will suffer uh, more than others. We have concentrated here a lot today on prices, and you talk a lot about the price of labor, labor costs, and yet that is not the inflation according to sound money uh, uh, economics. The, the concern that sound money economist has is for the supply of money. If you increase the supply of money, you have inflation. Just because you're able to maintain a price level of a certain uh, level that uh, because of technology or for whatever, this should not be reassurance because we still can have our malinvestment, we can still have our excessive debt and borrowing, and, and it might contribute to even to the uh, margin debt and, and these various things. So I think we should concentrate, especially since we're dealing with monetary policy, more on monetary policy and what we're doing uh, with the money. It was suggested here that maybe you're running a, a, a policy that's too tight. Well, I'd, I'd happen to take exception to that because it's, it's been far from tight. I think that we have had tremendous growth in money. The last three months of last year might be historic highs for the increase of, of Federal Reserve credit. In the last three months, the Federal Reserve credit was increasing at a rate of 74% percent. It is true, a lot of that has been withdrawn already. But this credit that was created at that time also influenced M3, and M3 during that period of time grew significantly, not quite as, as fast as the credit itself, but M3 uh, was rising at a 17 percent rate. Now, since that time, of course, a lot of the credit has been withdrawn, but I have not seen any significant decrease in M3. And I wanted to just refer to this chart that the Federal Reserve pre pre prepared on M3 uh, for the past three years, and it sets the targets. And for three years, you've never been once in the target range. You know, if I set my targets and I perform like that as a physician, my patient would die. I mean, this, this would be big trouble in medicine, but here it doesn't seem to bother anybody. And if you extrapolate and looked at the targets set in 1997 and carried that set of targets all the way out, you only missed M3 by $690 billion. I mean, just a small amount of extra money that came in the circulation, but I think it's harmful. Uh, I know Wall Street likes it, and uh, the economy likes it when the bubble's getting bigger, but my concern is what's going to happen when this bursts, and, and I, th I think it, it will unless you can uh, reassure me. But the one specific question I have is, uh, will M3 shrink? Is that a goal of yours to shrink M3, or is it only to withdraw some of that uh, credit that you injected for the non-crisis of Y2K? Um, let me suggest to you that uh, the monetary aggregates, as we measure them, are becoming increasingly complex and difficult to integrate into a, into a set of forecasts. The problem we have is not that money is unimportant, but how we define it. By definition, all prices are indeed the ratio of an exchange of a good for money. And what we seek is what that 
is. Our problem is we used M1 at one point as the proxy for money, and it turned out to be a very difficult as an indicator of any financial state. We then went to M2 and had the similar problem. We've never done M3 per se because it largely reflects the extent of expansion of the banking industry and when, in effect, banks expand in and of itself, it doesn't tell you terribly much about what the real money is. So our problem is not that we do not believe in sound money. We do. We very much believe that if you have a debased currency, that you will have a debased economy. The difficulty is in defining what part of our liquidity structure is truly money. We've had trouble ferreting out proxies for that for a number of years, and the standard we employ is whether it gives us a good forward indicator of the direction of finance and the economy. Regrettably, none of those which we've been able to develop, including MZM, has not done that. That does not mean that we think that money is irrelevant. It means that we think our measures of money have been inadequate. And as a consequence of that, we, as I've mentioned previously, uh, have downgraded the use of the monetary aggregates for monetary policy purposes until we are able to find a more stable proxy for what we believe is the underlying money in the economy. So it's hard to manage something you can't define. It is not possible to manage something you can't define. Is the gentleman finished? Yeah, thank you very much, Dr. Paul.